This is the Husqvarna Swat Villain 401. Just take a look at this bike. It looks crazy. It's not something you see on the streets every day. So let's take a closer look. The two Husqvarna's have finally been updated in India, but we get the 401 engine only on the Swat Villain. The width Villain remains a 250. We see the 401 badging on the tank, but let's look at my favorite part, the front. To me, the front looks straight out of Cyberpunk. The round headlights, it has a very nice neo-classic look. Taking a closer look at the headlights, we have a LED setup here. The rings are the DRLs and they look really nice when they're on. The indicators here are of course LED. We see the Husqvarna logo on the fender here, but let's check out the suspension. The suspension is WP Apex and it's a USD setup. And of course, these are adjustable. Moving on to the tires, we get Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs. The front tire is 110 70 17. We get a 320mm disc here with bi-brake calipers. Husqvarna logo again here on the radiator guards. The tank follows a similar design language, but it's bigger. Now we get a 13.5 litre tank, much more practical. Taking a look at the engine, it produces 46 brake horsepower at 8500 rpm and 39 newton meters of torque at 6500 rpm. The engine on this bike is the same that we get on the Duke 390s and that is not all that this bike shares with the KTM. The two bikes have a similar DNA and they produce about the same power. There are a lot of other similarities, the engine, mainframe, suspension and a lot more. At the back also we get a WP Apex monoshock suspension. These are also adjustable. Right under that we have the underbelly exhaust. This is also something that this bike shares with the KTM and it sounds really good. Swat pillin badging here and moving on to the seat. With a lower 820mm seat height, the seats are good for shorter riders but also very comfortable for taller riders. They are soft and very good for city rides. We get 150, 60, 17 Pirelli Scorpions on the rear as well. We get a 240mm disc brake setup here also with bi brake calipers. The frame again is from the KTM. The tail lights here are also full LED with LED indicators. And as we can see, the chop rear end with the tire hugger is gone. The bike is now more practical with a full size rear fender. On the other side of the bike, there's not much to see, so let's move on to the instrument cluster. We turn on the bike and it greets you with the Husqvarna logo. We have a full digital instrument cluster here. As we can see, the screen tells us the side stand is engaged. The bike will of course not move forward if the side stand is engaged, but it's nice to have that information here in case you forget. The four buttons here will help you navigate the screen and there is a lot to do here. With riding modes, different ABS modes and traction control modes, this bike has a lot to offer. We can explore all of that when we are riding the bike for the full review. We will ride this bike on the roads. We will come back to you with the full review. Till then, stay tuned to India Times and keep watching Drive It.